Welcome to Las Vegas, Nevada. We've reached fight night of one of the most highly anticipated matchups in recent years. And it's only appropriate that we come to you from the undisputed boxing capital of the world. T-Mobile Arena is the beloved home of the Las Vegas NHL hockey team. But tonight, two Golden Knights from another realm will pick up arms, lace up their gloves, and square off in the main event. Hello, everyone. I'm Brian Custer. Well, tonight, we finally arrive at the mega fight of 2023. Gervonta Tank Davis and King Ryan Garcia, both unbeaten, both in their primes, and both carry serious knockout power in both of their hands. You know, this is the matchup boxing fans have been demanding and a fight that has major crossover appeal because of the millions of followers that Davis and Garcia have collected. It is an event that has energized the sport, it's polarized fans and just blown up social media. This is not only the biggest test for Javante Davis and Ryan Garcia, but a big payday as well. But in the end, of course, it's not really about the money. It's not about the bravado or the belts. It's about proving who's the best in the ring. And as they both proclaim, who will take his rightful place as the new face of boxing. And with that, joining me are the guys who will be ringside. They'll be calling all of the action tonight. Of course, this is the voice of Showtime Boxing, Moro Ronaldo. That is the Hall of Famer himself, Al Bernstein. And that's the former three-division world champion, Abner Mars. Mo, I'll start with you because when this fight was made, we knew this thing was going to be big. But the amount of the attention that this event has garnered, I think, has surprised all of us and more than we all imagined how do you explain it well there is an x factor at work here bc and it's hard to define because it's well an x factor but you know it when you see it and both davis and garcia have it on this earth day this is the type of matchup that the world stops to watch the late hall of fame trainer emmanuel stewart said it best knockout sell and when you record a combined 45 KOs in 51 fights and you have the type of star power that is visible from space, <laughs> you sell all available tickets in under five minutes, which is what these two supernovas did. Tonight's not about titles. Davis and Garcia are doing this for legacy, for glory, and maybe most importantly, for the gram, fam. <laughs> yeah, you're right about that. Listen, in this day and age, it, it seems like it's all about the gram. And speaking of a guy who's all about the gram, that Al. Would, that would be me, yes. <laughs> Listen, we've chronicled Javante Davis's journey to becoming a champion and a mega star. But you feel tonight is the apex. Yeah, it's interesting. We have watched him in this 10-year boxing journey that has taken him across several weight divisions, has produced many highlight reel knockouts and exciting fights. And while he's been doing that, he has packed arenas in several cities across America. But with that, what he's been looking for is that defining moment of this part of his boxing journey. To get that, he needed a, an opponent that was not only good, but very popular. And of course, that defines Ryan Garcia. So yes, tonight is a destination for Gervonta Davis and an important one. He would say certainly not the last one. You know, Gervonta talked a lot about how he would come here to Vegas to watch his mentor Floyd yeah. Mayweather. And he said everybody would come to this town to watch him fight. He says, you know, I got to take it in. Now everyone's coming to see me yeah. fight. And he's right. This place is going to be electric tonight. Abner, let's talk about his opponent in Ryan Garcia. He's already established his punching power and, without question, his star power. And with that said, he's a unique kind of attraction, right? He definitely is, Brian. I mean, this is the type of audience that he brings. My two girls, my daughters, never went to any of my fights. Not they want to go see me, not even <laughs> once. And probably because I'm ugly. I don't know why. I'm going to tell you what. And for Ryan Garcia, they begged. They said, Daddy, we want to go see Ryan Garcia fight live. That's the type of crowd this guy, this kid brings. And, and let me tell you something. Yeah, it's maybe because a good looking kid and he got some girls crazy over him. But it's time to put some respect on this kid's name. It's more than just a face. He's a real fighter. He can fight. He's, he's proven. I mean, we're talking about a kid that's been fighting since he was seven years old, over 300 amateur fights. I mean, boxing is in this blood. And tonight is about showing that, that he is more than just a face. And speaking of faces, Brian, tonight, he's one, let, one, hell, 
He's one left hook away from becoming the face of boxing tonight. Listen, his timing, his quickness, and as you pointed out, that left hook is deadly. And he believes, look, honestly believes that he's going to stop Tank Davis tonight. And he believes early. We'll see. Should be one heck of a main event. I'll let you guys get ready to call all the action. We go backstage with Ryan Garcia, who says Tank Davis's past opponents got into the ring without the belief they could actually beat him. But King Ryan does believe it. Garcia says that's why two of his last three opponents have been southpaws. He's been preparing himself for this fight all along. Ryan said they put an emphasis in camp on keeping his right hand up by his chin so he doesn't get caught by Davis's powerful left. Garcia told me his speed, timing, and left hook will be too much for Tank. And he believes the knockout will be produced by a right hand headshot. Garcia says some may be shocked by what he'll do tonight, but he's going to show everyone why he's the best, most talented fighter in boxing. Gervonta Davis in his dressing room. Tank told me he noticed that Ryan Garcia keeps both of his hands down at times and his chin up when he's punching. And that's going to be his downfall tonight. Tank says his boxing IQ is better. He's going to show that his hands and his feet are much faster than those of Garcia. Davis says he plans to see what Garcia has to offer early on but will start much faster than he has in previous fights. He believes he will knock Ryan Garcia out before the eighth round. We approach our main event from here at T-Mobile Arena. Folks, they sold out this place in record time in a capacity crowd of 20,000 842 is ready for this fight just moments away. Moro, tonight this arena, this crowd are shining with bright lights and superstars. All right, BC star-studded crowd includes NBA point guard Damian Lillard, whose knowledge of boxing is on point. He made a TV commercial with Ryan Garcia. Future NFL quarterback and two-time Heisman Trophy finalist with the Ohio State Buckeyes, C.J. Stroud. A loud and proud supporter of Stroud and Gervonta Davis is Cowboys linebacker Micah Parsons, who predicts tank by KO. Undefeated unified 122-pound champ Stephen Fulton Jr. is the latest fighting phenom from Philadelphia. Former 168-pound belt holder Caleb Plant has had big fights in Vegas against Canelo and David Benavidez. Ryan Garcia played baseball before he started boxing. That's Gary Sheffield, who led the Florida Marlins to victory in the 97 World Series. Well, you know Las Vegas Raiders defensive end Max Crosby hopes the main event reaches a crush end of. 2008 NBA champ and finals MVP for the Celtics, Paul the Truth Pierce striking a pose. The boxing ring is the theater of truth. The doctor is in the house. It's great to see basketball royalty Julius Irving grace us with his Hall of Fame presence. Speaking of Hall of Famers, Sugar Ray Leonard knows a thing or two about super fights. And the king of crunk, Lil John, is here to see firsthand who will emerge as the king of the ring. From a sold out T-Mobile arena in Las Vegas, Nevada, it is time for the biggest fight of the year. 28-year-old Gervonta Tank Davis, 24-year-old King Ryan Garcia, they put the pop in pop culture, and this crossover clash in front of a sold-out crowd is about to pop off. Well, fans, the time has come for the bout you've all been waiting for. It's time for boxing's highly anticipated showdown. It's time for Gervonta Davis versus Ryan Garcia. Who do you want to fight? Tank Davis, you know right that. Now. He's been training, he's been talking. Two rounds, you're going to sleep. Of course, on my end, I'm, I'm ready. 
There's no going back now. You talk this way into this fight, be going to show it. I'm ready, baby. Let's get it. it. The world of boxing is on fire. This man better be ready for war. I'm here to get nasty, and I'm coming at you. And you've seen it. The more speed I have, the more power I have. I've been doing this for so long. Everything is clear as day. I think Ryan don't know how big it's going to be. Over his last six fights, Tank Davis has averaged over 15,000 fans per event. Let's go, Tank! Let's go! I'm coming to destroy him with the left hook. Done. This guy I keep talking about, he's going to hit me with a hook. Touch that chin. I'll touch that chin. I'm going to that left hook right there. He don't have nothing else but a hook. Maybe that's all it's going to take. Boom. Fighting for your life. You're fighting for your family. You're fighting for what you believe in. You haven't seen the best of Tank yet, and I'm waiting for it. I am amazed by Ryan's power. It's almost freakish. It's frightening. You need a performance of your life. Oh, yeah. He's never felt the speed, the power. He'd never felt none of that. Talk some more shit, man. <laughs> it's time to see now. It's, it's time to see. Tonight is about showing us the Baltimore Tank Davis, the mean, the rugged, the KO artist. But at the same time, we want a high Q, smart, thinking in the ring, Tank Davis. You don't want to make mistakes. You definitely do not want to reach overreach against the taller Ryan Garcia. Davis said this one fight means more than the thousand fights I've been in in my life. He's a star. I'm a star. I needed a dance partner. We want to see who's the best. We'll take a look at the numbers for this fight and some of them are very significant and intriguing. Now, Garcia has weighed 139 and three quarters and 138 and a quarter in his last two fights. Of course, he had to make 136 for this one. There was a 10 pound rehydration clause. Today at 11 a.m., they both reweighed in. Garcia weighed in at 144.9 this morning, and Davis came in at 144.1, so they made it. The height and reach advantage for Garcia is the second biggest Davis has faced. Mario Barrios was six feet tall with a 71 inch reach. We'll see how that plays out. And the rules for the main event. No three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the contest. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. The fight becomes official after four complete rounds. A star-studded crowd in attendance here in the fight capital of the world, Las Vegas. It is time for the official introductions for the main event. Here's the classy Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to the T-Mobile Arena here in Las Vegas, Nevada, as Premier Boxing Champions presents the featured bout of the evening, brought to you by GTD Promotions, TGB Promotions, Golden Boy Promotions, and Showtime Pay-Per-View. And we extend a special welcome to the brave men and women serving around the world and joining us tonight on AFN, the American Forces Network. This bout is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. The chairman is Anthony A. Marnell III, Executive Director Jeff Mullen. Introducing our three judges, scoring from ringside. From Nevada, Tim Cheatham. Also from Nevada, Dave Moretti. And from New Jersey, Steve Weisfeld. Introducing our third man to the ring, the referee in charge of this bout. He'll be giving instructions after the introductions, Thomas Taylor. All right, fans, here we go with the main event of the evening, a catchweight super fight, a battle of undefeated superstars of the sport, scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, it's showtime! <laughs> 
Introducing to you first, on my right, fighting out of the red corner, entering the ring, wearing black trunks, fighting out of Los Angeles by way of Victorville, California. He weighed in at a ready 135 and one half pounds. He is undefeated in his spectacular campaign with a record of 23 wins, no losses, 19 wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the acclaimed boxing sensation, tonight making his Showtime debut. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the undefeated, hard-hitting, wildly popular star of boxing and the former WBC interim lightweight world champion, introducing King Ryan. his opponent across the ring. On my left, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing green trunks, purple and white trim, ah! hailing from ah! Baltimore, Maryland. He weighed in at 135 pounds. He also is undefeated in his tremendous career with a record of 28 wins, no losses, 26 big wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the electrifying star of boxing and popular pound for pound great. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the hard hitting powerhouse and renowned five time three division world champion and the current undefeated WBA lightweight champion of the world, introducing Gervonta Tank Davis. Once again, a referee in charge now to give instructions, Thomas Taylor. I'm up there. Tank. Let's get Kelvin out here. Okay, gentlemen, belt lines on both sides are good. You got my instructions in the back. Protect yourselves at all times, listen to my commands. Touch them up. Back to corner, gentlemen. Referee Thomas Taylor, 13 years pro experience, working his 523rd pro bout. Davis Garcia capable of producing enough power to light up the Sin City Strip. They have up to 36 minutes to ace their moment of truth. The bell, round number one. Garcia immediately looking to establish the jab and leads with the left hook. Caught by the guard of Davis. And again, Davis on that back foot. Just wanting to see what Garcia brings to the table early. Two of the last three fighters that uh, Garcia has faced have been lefties, Javier Fortuna and Luke Campbell. He knocked them both out with one punch. Of course, this is a different kettle of fish, but he likes that he's had experience against lefties recently. And of course, Garcia overcame a hard knockdown against Campbell before getting up, showing his grit, his resilience, and sending the Olympic gold medalist into retirement with a body shot. And we kind of knew that Davis was going to start somewhat like this, you know, backing up, but definitely not staying on the ropes. And when I mean backing up, he's using his angles. He's moving side to side, not staying on the ropes, and, you know, just trying to see what Garcia brings in. Garcia has knockouts in six of his last seven fights, including over Javier Fortuna last July. And in that fight, he dropped Fortuna three times, all You'll be surprised to hear this, guys. A little <laughs> trademark left hook. <laughs> As we approach the midway point of this cautious start to the first round, there's the jab from the Southpaw Davis, who has Floyd Mayweather in attendance here tonight. Mayweather, of course, headlined the biggest pay-per-views in history here in Las Vegas, supporting Davis as he headlines a pay-per-view for the first time 
in Sin City. You know, da uh, Davis said he thought he, while he is normally cautious in his starts, as we pointed out, he was going to try and be a little more aggressive in the early rounds. I expected, as most of us did, both fighters would take this kind of cautious approach early. Even Davis said, I don't want to walk into something, and neither does Garcia. Under a minute left in the first, both quality counter punchers, Abner. Yeah, really uh, uh, powerful punches as well, and that's why they're taking their time. They don't want to be the first one, the first one to make a mistake, because whoever does make the mistake is going to pay dearly. And there's that hand speed. As Garcia flashes the jab three times, Davis looks to go to the body. And of course, against the orthodox fighter is a southpaw. You bait going downstairs, go upstairs. And of course, that lead foot battle is very yeah. crucial. And right now, it's neutral. It's really neutral. No one really trying to put their foot outside each other's uh, foot. Listen for that bell, gentlemen. Jab lands for Garcia at the end of the round. Time right there. Let me just tell you something. That was a great round. That was a perfect hold on. That was a perfect one. And you won it by virtue of just jabbing, stepping in and out. Now he's gonna start making some hard moves at you. He's just looking for counters, right? Keep on your toes, just be relaxed. Yeah, that's right. Alright, you good? It's your party, baby. Don't let him get them sucker ass jabs, y'all, okay? Alright? Sam? Let's go. Calvin Ford, Javante Davis's trainer who really rescued him as a child from the streets of Baltimore. Davis told us that Ford was a light he needed as a child, and Ford says, hey, I don't train Tank for knockouts. I train him to punish his opponents. And in that first round, as expected, a deliberate start by Davis, who only averages just over 30 punches around in that first round. He threw seven, landed one, and while they're both undefeated, hey, they both had zeros when it came to power punches landed in the first three minutes. And it, and it, it turns out Garcia's the first one to try to land power punches, and he's doing it there. And Garcia putting the pressure on Davis, landing the right and left, and Davis trying to hold on. The much bigger Garcia. And of course, mixed fan base here with every punch that's thrown, whether it lands or not, you will hear from their respective fan bases. And this is exactly what Ryan Garcia has to do. Start off fast and make Tang Davis feel uncomfortable, and he's doing that right now. Davis utilizing lateral movement along the ropes. Now, one thing Garcia is good at is cutting off the ring, and, and he's doing that fairly well. And boy, a lot of holding on the inside. Davis lunging at Garcia, yeah. referee. You're diving in your holding, right? Can't dive in the hole. Taylor admonishing Davis for doing so. Yeah, warning to both fighters. A more aggressive second round for Garcia. And of course, he would like to make something, as Abner said, dramatic happen, but do it in a way where he doesn't put himself in harm's way. And you you look at all the pundits, all the scouts everywhere online, they, they say that Garcia had to take advantage of Davis's slow starts, whether deliberate or not. And here in round two, putting the pressure on Davis. Davis wanting to turn this into a... A wrestling match. Yeah, Davis has to be careful. He was looking at the referee. You got to protect yourselves at all times. And he's oh, he just ducked underneath that left hook. But got oh. oh, what a shot! What a missile strike by Davis! And just like that, Javante Davis drops Ryan Garcia for the second time in his career here in the second. And just like that, Garcia bounces back up quickly. Like Rolly Romero, Garcia overcommitted and mm -hmm. got hit with that counter left hand by Davis. And yeah. that's the one thing they were worried about in the Garcia camp. Oh, and he hits him again with that left through the guard. Left hook by Garcia. And again, Davis beginning to feel it now with that left hand. 15 seconds left. Yeah. High drama already in Sin City after 
a slow start in round one, Gervonta Davis drops Ryan Garcia in round two. Well, a missed left hook by Garcia. And Davis with the right hand. Oh, right uppercut from Garcia. Let's see if Garcia, what he does with his right hand and why that left hand is there. Through a left hook, Davis countered him with the, with the left. He is great with that counter left hand. We talked about it before the fight. And here we'll see why Garcia was open to it. He got off balance, got hit. Straight, he's had his head up high like he normally does. And guess what, he got comfortable. He was feeling himself because he was landing some yes. few shots. But Javante Davis came in with that beautiful overhand left. And one important point is Garcia was able to get up from it pretty quickly. Like and he was, did against Campbell. Yes, and was able to sustain in that round. We'll see if that continues. Round three, Garcia immediately takes the center of the ring. Trying to bounce back. After a nightmare scenario second stands up for Garcia, but back on the prowl. Davis along the ropes, going side to side, not allowing Garcia to set up. You know, it's fascinating, uh, according to sh uh, show stats, only four punches landed by Davis, but the one he, he landed made was low up, yeah. high accuracy. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> but the one he landed was pretty important. Yeah, you don't want to overcommit if you're Garcia, and he kind of did, and yeah. that's how he got knocked down. He was doing good. You want to pressure Davis like you are right now with that jab. Keep him busy, but don't overcommit or do not oh. force something that is not there. So quick with that lead left hand from the hip. Gervonta Tank Davis scores again. And you know, the There's a jab from Garcia. The interesting thing is Garcia wants to land his own check left hook, but if he's coming forward, he can't land it as a counterpunch to Davis. So I'm wondering if he'll right. lay back more, and they want him to fight taller. And there, Davis with the lead foot to the outside of Garcia, allowing him to close the gap. And to answer that, uh, Al, it, it's only if Davis throws a lazy jab. That's when you want to take a little step back and, and counter him with that hook. But right now, Davis is really fast with that jab. Hard to counter. And we've seen in the past where Ryan Garcia has a tendency to pull straight back in a linear position and can at times expose his chin doing so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he pulls straight back like he's doing right now. You don't want to do that. Davis is my time that. There's that left hook to the body by Garcia. Yeah, Garcia knocked Luke Campbell out with that. He would like to get that left hook in, but has to be careful because, again, be concerned about the counter. Faint by Davis looking to let him the lead right hook. There pops the jab and again tags Garcia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he didn't overcommit it. He, he fainted. He didn't see anything. He didn't take it. And then he took it because he saw it. So that's, that's how you do it. There's a left hook check hook by Garcia. Coming up on the final 30 seconds of the third. Davis putting on the pressure. You know, jabs are not going to be a factor in terms of landing punches. They only land, I think, four, uh, you know, 20 of 24 punches they land per round. These guys are, are jabs, but the jabs will help them set up yes. the power punches. Garcia backing himself into quarter, fires off the right hand, goes for the hook, and then moves to his left. Coming. There's a straight right by Garcia. Good round for Javante Davis. There's someone who appreciates the knockdown. That is Mike Tyson. Gervonta Davis has been called the mini Mike Tyson, and you know Tyson had to appreciate that knockdown earlier in the fight. We got a bucket here. We got a bucket. Uh -huh. You can spit right here. You know, all right. <laughs> Look, he's, he's looking to thread that little. Watch out for the left uppercut too. He's looking for that. <laughs> so keep the jab going. That little right hand that you threw at the end, that'll get close. Keep working that. Throw them off every so often and throw that. You doing all right? Listen, but one to 12, baby. Up. And he's one to 12, yay. Hey. Your yeah. Keep your hands up. Hey, and Frank, don't look. Frank going 
coming out, but go low. Left, faint, faint, go high, go low, head. You heard Joe Goosen letting Garcia know that Davis is looking for that left uppercut. He landed the left uppercut from Hades against Leo Santa Cruz in what was the 2020 knockout of the year, dropping and stopping Leo Santa Cruz for the first time as Garcia coming forward with the left. Yeah, really good instructions from both sides. And Davis, they were telling him, you want, you want to faint. You want to faint a little bit more. And yeah, you want to do that if you're Davis, just like that, because you want to see what Garcia has and, and make him open up his guard. That's a good way to take the jab away from Garcia as well, oh, what Davis is doing right now. Left hook to the body by Garcia. And Davis responds with a straight left to the midsection. Good job of fainting by Davis and able to pull counter like Floyd Mayweather Jr. Neither of these men are volume punchers. This has been low volume even overall for both men. But again, it's And yet the it's the constant threat of yeah, the knockout that's right. that has this tension. Yeah, where you need a chainsaw to cut. You're absolutely right. <laughs> And the way this fight is being fought, the Garcia left hook is not a factor right now. And that's a problem for him because that is the weapon. And if Garcia doesn't, uh, you know, if Davis doesn't attack too much, uh, the left hook can't get there as a check yeah. hook. And right. one thing he has really good, I'm sorry, Mo, is that right hand, Garcia. Yeah. He's got to let go of that right hand. And he just did when you were mentioning it there. Yeah. But a lot more, and they asked for that in this corner. The right hand is lethal for the for the softball. Oh, see, now, there was that attempt at a hook because Davis is starting to attack a little more. We'll see the check hook more as Davis comes in. There's Whether to land, we don't know. jab from Davis. Stiff jab. A minute left in the fourth. Scheduled for 12 at a contract weight of 136 pounds. Lead left hand to the breadbasket. Scores for Davis. There's a right hand from Garcia. And it's a lead right hand. It's sharp. You want to follow it up with the hook. Davis continues to win the foot battle. Keeping his lead foot to the outside of Ryan Garcia. Closing the distance for his trademark left. And there it is. Trying to create an angle. Tank Davis is really smart. He saw that uh, Davis Garcia was letting go of the right hand, and he was trying to time that right hand. High ring IQ. It's been in the gym since he was a child. And yes, known for his explosive power and knockouts, but he has the ability to seek and destroy or to box. Oh, right hand by Garcia inside at the end of the court. Davis getting the left hand in again as Garcia came in. That was a lead left. And you see Garcia kind of looking to yeah. hang on early. He wanted to make sure I got that good punch in. I don't want to get hit on the inside. Again, to look at it, that's pretty good that he can land that lead left yeah. without it, having to do anything else before that. And it's almost like beating him, beating, beating Ryan to the punch. Yeah. He kind of sensed that Ryan was going to let, let go of the right hand, and boom, Tank Davis beat him with that left. Manny Pacquiao, only eight division champion in boxing history, has been involved in so many super fights, including the biggest pay-per-view event of all time against that man, Floyd Mayweather Jr. <laughs> Who isn't at the fight tonight? Yeah, right. yeah, Round sure. number five. And one of the intriguing things about this fight, while Tank Davis has been very economical with his punches, you can make a strong case, he, other than round one, he could be winning these other rounds. Yeah. And so, 
he, even though he hasn't been super voluminous in his voluminous in his punches, he's landing the significant oh, punches. I, 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 I agree. I yeah. think he may have lost round one, but the, I see him winning every round six. Yeah, it's very possible. Yeah, the clear punches definitely have been landed by Davis, and he's doing a really, really good job of boxing right now. This is boxing. Look at the angles. Look at he's, he's placing his foot where he wants to. He lets go of, let go of his hands when he needs to. He's a power punching counter puncher, Abner. Yes, he's countering punching really well. Garcia, he's pressuring, but he's not letting go of the, the jab. He's got to jab a little bit more. And of course, if you're Ryan Garcia, you still believe that you can turn this, even though you might be losing some rounds, that your power can make a difference in this fight. And he's going to keep trying to make that happen. You wonder if Davis trying to set a trap there has himself again in the corner, but fainting. And he told us that his accuracy is the key to his power, hitting the bullseye. And he told us that he was going to knock out Ryan Garcia in the seventh or eighth round. Garcia has not been jabbing as much no. in the last couple of rounds, and that will help him if he doesn't work, have the potential of getting that right hand in. Well, he's being countered with that jab, so he's yeah. got to start double jabbing. He's got to yes. be quicker with the jab as well, so that's why he's not constant with the jab, but Dave is doing a good jab, job of counterpunching the, the longer reach, the taller guy in Garcia. There's that left hook that landed, and that one just missed, but Garcia shows up as Davis lands the left, goes to the body, under a minute left in the fifth. That, was, that hook was really close to getting, hitting Davis. Sharp jab by Garcia. We've seen Garcia under Goosen. Doing a better job of keeping his right hand high against Luke Campbell. That wasn't the case. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't the case. And he was getting every time. He was getting hit every time he was pulling back. Stop, 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 stop. Yes, sir, sir. He was working with Eddie Reynoso at the time and now working with Joe Goosen. Yeah, Joe Goosen has done a really good job with Ryan Garcia. And Calvin Ford has done an exceptional job with Javante Tank Davis. As we have Listen completed yourself, five of scheduled 12 rounds in this mega main event. Well, Davis is more, lands normally in the 30 percentile of body punches. Garcia, not so much. And here is Davis, he will try to go downstairs. There he is, that partially blocked, but there he goes with the right hook that does get in as Garcia is trying to cover up defensively. Garcia is more of a body puncher, or that Davis is more of a body puncher than Garcia. Mark Wahlberg. Hey, the, the leader of Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch mm. feeling those good vibrations <laughs> in Las Vegas. Mark Wahlberg, who was in the fighter, of course. So it's, and man, you talk about fighters, Arturo, Gotti, Mickey Ward, those battles, and good to see Mark Wahlberg in attendance. And is that Mario Lopez right beside him? I yeah, believe it is. You cannot so miss that smile. <laughs> Our good friend. Hang on, hang on. Go. Round number six, Davis utilizing the real estate, utilizing his footwork. Trying to lure Ryan Garcia into a potential counter scenario. Garcia attacking the body with the jab. Doesn't follow up with the right, however. Yeah, yeah the pressure's there for Garcia, but the output not so much. He's got to start letting go of the hands, keep Davis busy with them. You know, this two months layoff is the shortest Davis has had between fights since 2017. And people wondered, would that be good for him or bad for him or to keep him sharp? So far, things are working out very well for him. Remember, he fought. Oh, there's a right hand that caught oh, Davis. Yeah. Another right hand and Garcia with his best moments of the fight. Remember, Davis did fight in January against Hector Luis Garcia. Garcia forego, decided to forego a final fight, was supposed to fight Mercedo Jesta before this fight, said, no, no, I'll wait for the biggest fight of my life. Thank you very much. Yeah, and you know, those right hands Garcia landed were good ones, and Davis yeah. now moving forward because he wants to try and, he wants to try and take the play away. 
Yeah, he don't want to be caught in a position where he's, he's uncomfortable. And he was at the moment, and he said, no, I got to throw my own punches, make you feel uncomfortable. Lead right hook to the body by Davis. Just past the midway point of the sixth round. And that's almost Davis showing Garcia a way for showing him that, he, you know, you're not in the fight. Garcia has been much more focused on landing that right hand in this round. Even there, he just missed one. But he's, the ones he's landed have been oh, good. And there's a strike right down the middle for Garcia. A minute left here in the sixth straight left for Davis. Davis trying to control the lead hand of Garcia. Oh, and just missed with that sweeping left hook. Look at those fans from Davis not committing when he doesn't need to. 45 seconds left. Garcia coming close. And in, a, in these rounds with low output and not that many punches landed, the difference is which punches are more effective. And this round is a perfect example. You have to decide. And let's not forget, Davis did say, I don't want to knock him out. I want to punish Ryan Garcia. I'm not saying that he's punishing him right now, but he is landing really good, significant punches. Now, Garcia's he mentioned landed. over, uh, Calvin Ford said, he doesn't train him to knock him out. He yeah. wants him to punish him, but Davis yeah. said he was going to stop him in their seventh or eighth, and we're 10 seconds away from round number seven as things heat up here between Davis and Garcia. Very close round in round six. Ryan Garcia had a very good moment in that round. He he throws this right hand, Davis keeping his left hand very low, and that right hand got in. And there were a couple other right hands shortly after that that Garcia was able to land as well. That one was a little glancing, but and here let's look at the same one as Garcia gets that right hand in. It wasn't the perfect right hand for him, but it was a nice punch and it landed, and there were several of those during the course of the round. The Charlo Twins in attendance. Number seven. And so we begin the second half of this 12-round confrontation between undefeated Gervonta Davis, undefeated Ryan Garcia, and uh, Davis. Letting the referee know we've got a little wardrobe malfunction, little tape issue. Yeah, and then the good thing that Davis saw that because because that. Oh, oh. No, I didn't see that. He didn't see that. Yeah. Garcia's back to using the jab, and that's helping to set up that right hand. You know, this is an adjustment by yes. Garcia. He knows the left hook isn't getting there. And Joe Goosen told him after round one, you got to get to that right hand, and he's doing it. Let's bring in our unofficial scorer, Steve Steve Farhood. What do you have it at the midway point? Well, I don't say this too often, uh, Mo, but I don't think it's been that hard a fight to score. I mean, obviously, Davis for the 10-8 round in the second with the knockdown. Garcia kept his hands in his pockets in rounds three, four, and five, easy for Davis. And then Garcia came back with the right hands in round six. So I have a 58-55 Davis to halfway mark. Straight left hand lands for Davis. Alicia on there, Garcia comes in, scores with the right hook, left hand combination. Yeah, that's one of the first left hooks, and that wasn't a dynamite left hook, but it was one of the few left hooks he's been able to get in. Another left hook and a right hand by Garcia. And now, oh, Garcia forced to take a knee. A perfect historical reference that applies here. And for that man, <laughs> a very, very big moment. Round 
and seven, just as he predicted. Gervonta Tank Davis improves to 29 and 0 with his 27th knockout. Ryan Garcia tasting defeat for the first time in paralyzing fashion. What a body shot. I mean, I didn't even see it. It was so quick, well-timed. And I mean, Ryan Garcia, it was like a late reaction. He took a step back, he took a knee, and he was paralyzed. He's looking at the count. What a moment here between Floyd Mayweather and Gervonta Davis. Hasn't always been Hasn't easy. always, yeah. Right. But man, moments. Floyd Mayweather instrumental in getting Gervonta Tank Davis to where he is. And Davis oh, talked about it. Brian Custer mentioned it, top of the broadcast, what it meant for Tank Davis to finally be a headliner here in Las Vegas after coming to see his mentor, Floyd Mayweather, on so many different occasions. You know, both these men have had knockouts with body punches. Garcia or Davis is considered the more devoted body puncher. Good moment of sportsmanship, and he, his body punching did the job. You know, it's interesting. Abner, you said you didn't even see the punch. I, I yeah. agree with you. It's, yeah. Ryan, Ryan Garcia in previous fights said his left hook to the body is like the ghost punch. Ali had the anchor punch. He has a ghost punch. I think Gervonta Davis may have just stolen that ghost <laughs> punch. Yeah, and I, I quite didn't see it. It was really fast. And again, it was a really, really late reaction from Ryan Garcia. And we will have a look at it. Several looks, in fact, as we look back at the quick body punch that ended this fight. There it is, the straight left hand down to the body. And you're right, in real time, it was hard to see, but at this juncture, Ryan Garcia just couldn't sustain yeah. from it. And, you know, Garcia lands good body punches in fights and has scored knockdowns with him. And here's an example. Abner, have you... Inspiring I a talk about what this I must have. be like. I have. Any fighter that's out there knows how how tough, how much that hurts. That hurts more than any headshot. We're going to see the, the quick reaction from Tank Davis. Boom. Well timed. Right, right in the liver. Boom. Ryan Garcia is trying to suck that up, but he can't. His re late reaction, his body, body shutting down. He just took a knee. And I think he thought strategically also, perhaps I can gather myself mm -hmm. and not have to take any punishment at the moment, but it, he just couldn't sustain. And it is just a fascinating uh, turn of events because it didn't look like he was even positioned Davis to get a lot of leverage on that left hand, oh. and, but he got more than enough and, and he, landed it yeah, at the perfect spot. The correct? perfect spot and then the crazy thing and is he that- he knew it, Davis knew it. Yeah, nobody thought that Dang Tank Davis was going to stop Ryan Garcia with a body shot. No. Maybe a head shot, maybe knock him out, but stop him with and, a body shot. Wow. And it was he, a left hook by the yeah. southpaw yeah. that did it, making the liver quiver and stopping <laughs> Ryan Garcia. And I think there, there were people that felt Davis might be a better body puncher in this, but if a body punch of one was going to make a difference, it was more thought to be Garcia that might do it. But it was, in fact, Javante Davis. And as you pointed out, Mauro, history repeating itself as it happened to his promoter. Gervonta Tank Davis headlining his first pay-per-view in Las Vegas. The smile on his face says it all. Is he the new face of boxing? He definitely closed the show in impressive fashion now. 29-0 with 27 KOs and Mamma Mia. Giovanni Davis's mama is one happy lady tonight. Kenya Brown, his mother, and I mean, the story's been well documented. All of the trials and tribulations that he has had to overcome growing up in Baltimore, but here he is on top of the world after, well, delivering on his promise Starching Ryan Garcia with that paralyzing body shot in the seventh. Let's check out the show stats. Now this is where Gervonta Davis, he averages 46% of his power punches landed. The best in boxing, 47 I believe. He landed 48% in this fight. And that is very significant. And of course the 18 body punches landed 
uh, the one that was most important. So those are the numbers that are important for him. Let's make it official. Here is Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time. One minute, 44 seconds in round number seven. A referee in charge, Thomas Taylor, reaches the count of 10. He is the winner by way of knockout and still undefeated, Javante Tank Davis. And that left strike just went. Viral. Let's go to Jim Gray. All right. Thank you very much. Thank. Congratulations. This was your defining moment in the sport. How would you describe it? Uh, everything was uh, excited, man. I was excited to be a part of this event. I remember coming up uh, in a uh, Golden Glove, and I seen seeing Floyd fight at uh, the MGM, and it was it was crazy. I actually just seen Rihanna perform at the Super Bowl, and I was like, that was going to be me one day, and we here. The dream that you had, does the reality match that dream? Yes, it definitely uh, matched the dream. You know, but uh, the job never done till I retire, so I'm going to keep my head down, stay humble, and, work, and continue to work. Seems as though you had a crystal ball as well. You said the seventh round to us. Uh, yesterday and the day before and take the towel down if you can there you go um, you predicted the seventh round how did you have that crystal ball uh, it was just me it was it was me just trying to get into his head you know I really I really uh, really don't know till I actually get in there with, with, with my opponent but once I got in there with him I felt like it was it was, the skill wise like it was it was like unmatched Let's take a look at the monitor. Let's go to the second round, if we can, and tell us about the first knockdown. He came out pretty strong in the first round, and then you knocked him down in the second. Tell us from your vantage point, Tank. It just him. Um, oh. Yeah, it, it just him trying to not know his his placement, and and I knew that I was I was a smarter guy. So we always like my coach was telling me like in camp. He's going to come up with his head up, so just shoot over top. Now let's jump to this body shot here in the seventh round and tell us, did you think that this fight would be over with this shot as we, will, as we look at it? There it is. Ooh. <laughs> Touch the guard, I told you. I, I ain't even... I, you didn't think it was over, did you? Nah, but, but I seen his face. I seen his face expression, and that's what made me, that's what made me take it to him. That's what made me take it to him. It was did a good you, shot, for did sure. Did you think he'd get up and continue? I thought he was going to get up. But I like, I like to play mind game. So <laughs> when he was looking at me, I was, I was looking at him, like, trying to tell him, like, get up. And then he just, he just shook his head no. I remember many years ago, we spoke, and you spoke to our production group. You said, I've watched Floyd. I watch Canelo. I look at all the tapes of Ray Leonard, Manny Pacquiao, all these guys. I'm going to be the face of boxing. Are you now? I'm definitely the face of boxing. Absolutely. <laughs> Tank, congratulations. Spectacular performance tonight. We look forward to having you on again here soon. Let's bring in Ryan. Ryan Garcia. You, oh, man. Oh. you came over and spoke to Tank. First of all, how are you, Ryan? Are you okay? Oh, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Uh, Tank is a great fighter. Uh, I take my hat off to him. I know... We talked a lot of shit coming up in here, but uh, he knows what it is. It's all love at the end of the day. Uh, I was honored to be in the ring with a great fighter, and I respect him a lot. And uh, you know how the business goes, but I want to say uh, you're a good man, bro. You know how it is. Yeah, for sure. What happened in that in that yeah. punch to the midsection? Classic. Yeah. There in the seventh round, and it seemed like a bit of a delay. Yeah, you know. Uh, he just caught me with a good shot. You know, I don't want to make no excuses in here. Uh, he caught me with a good shot, and uh, I just couldn't recover. Uh, and that's it, you know. I, that, that's all I got to say. He caught me with a good body shot, snuck under me, and caught me good. And there it is right there. Yeah. Did you think you were going to be able to continue? Or just yeah, what, what was going on internally? Having trouble breathing? 
I'm not I'm not saying nothing, but yeah, yeah, I couldn't couldn't breathe. Were you thinking about taking a knee initially right there? Yeah, yeah, I was gonna get back up, but uh nah, I just couldn't get up. You came out really strong. You won the first round. I haven't seen the official card. But then in the second round he caught you. Yeah. And, and you were coming in. Did that change the entire complexion for you and, and how you had to approach the fight? Yeah, I think I should have pressured him a little harder uh, near the ropes. I was giving him a little too much respect, and uh, that was, I think that was my downfall. I think I gave him a little too much respect in the ring. Ryan, thanks for your time. you thank got a big you, future. Man, uh, thank you. Appreciate hey, it. Hey, no matter what, even if I lose, I want to say thank you, Jesus Christ, for all he does in my life. All right, Morrow, back to you, ringside. All right, thank you very much, Jim. A class act in defeat. Ryan Garcia, by the way, 24 years of age, tasting defeat for the first time. You know who else was 24 when he tasted hey, defeat for the first time? He's here with us tonight. Sugar Ray Leonard losing to Roberto Duran. He had an amazing career after that. I predict the same thing for Ryan Garcia. Yeah, and, you know, we talked about the fact that these men putting uh, those records on the line and that for either man, uh, we should not say that that's yeah. the end of the line. For Javante Davis, he... He has his defining moment for this part of his boxing journey. His mission now is to create more defining moments for the second part of his boxing journey. Most definitely. This was a perfect fight where he learned a lot. And not only that, let's, let's focus on the fact that most of the fights, when we talk about when he fought Barrios, when he fought Leo Sanchez, in those fights he was losing. This fight he was dominating. He was dominating. He was doing a fantastic job shoot, picking his shots really good. He fought really smart in this fight. And, and how he ended the fight is just perfect for Tank Davis. And he's, like you said, um, uh, head down, humble, and I'm just going to continue to learn even more. Let's bring in our unofficial scorer, Steve Farhood. Let's take a look at the judges scoring at the time of the stoppage. Mo, obviously there was a knockout victory here, so the scores don't really matter. They're a moot point, but some very odd scoring here <laughs> that the commission gave us. Round two was a knockdown round for Tank Davis. Dave Moretti scored it 10-10. Steve Weisfeld and Tim Cheatham, all three experienced judges, scored that round 10-9. And the commission said that's the way the judges scored it. So that's a little odd, but uh, Davis was ahead on all three cards at the time of the stop. My card, I obviously gave Davis 10-8 in round two. I had him ahead 58-55, giving Garcia the first and the sixth, but Davis everything else. Ryan Garcia went down from a counter left flush to the face with a minute left to round two. And then he took a knee midway through round seven following a paralyzing left hook to the liver and ended up staying there for the count of 10, going down to defeat for the first time, getting knocked out by Gervonta Tank Davis. And uh, BC, we talked about Davis averaging 15,500 fans over his last seven fights. That average going up thanks to tonight's announced attendance of 20,842 knockout sell. And if you're in the Gervonta Tank Davis business, business is really, really good. Good. I mean, this guy has got it all. You know, he told us that he was going to start a lot faster than he had in his previous fights. And you know what? Based on what he's done in the past, he did start faster uh, in this fight. And I think sometimes we take his boxing IQ for granted. This kid is special. Not only is he fast, not only is he explosive, he's a smart fighter. And you can tell he was timing Ryan Garcia, especially when Garcia would try to jab or throw his right hand. He was countering with that left and connecting. And he's accurate. I don't see anybody that at 135 that could take this guy out and listen he's certainly one of the pound for pound best right about now we captured some great audio in the corner during this fight we call it trainer tracks by the way you don't have to stay in the corner man it's your ring i mean you own this fucking ring control this jab and stuff here use your brick a little bit here and don't you get what I'm saying? Don't. We don't need that here. Keep your hands up high. Remember the defense we've been working on here. He's going to start making some hard moves at you. He's just looking for counters, right? Nice. You went after him a little bit too hard, Ryan. All right? Listen, I like what you did, but, I, but you can almost see him waiting for that. You notice when you're in close, what happens? 
Sometimes you gotta just say fuck it. You know what I'm saying? Give him a vicious body attack to get his hands down. He's gonna start coming in at you hard now, which is good for you, because you can trap him now. He's smart. Stop playing with him, dude. Get to his ass, yeah. Get to his ass. You understand what I'm saying? He's not on your level. I need some of that motherfucking drittering out your head. <laughs> Stop it on him! <laughs> I knew you was gonna enjoy that!